Uh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this public hearing of the New York City Rent Guidelines Board. This is the first of five public hearings to consider comments concerning proposed rent adjustments for renewal leases for apartments, lofts, hotels, and other housing units subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974. These adjustments will affect renewal leases commencing between October 1, 2017 through September 30th, 2018. I will now take roll call. Hillary Botin? Present. Harvey Epstein? Where'd he go? He's here. Harvey is I'll here. come back to him. Shayla Garcia? Present. Cecilia Hosa? Present. David Reese? Present. Helen Schaub? Present. Mary Serafi is absent. Scott Walsh? Present and myself, Kathleen Roberts. Um, let the record show that we have a quorum. Uh, the next meeting of this board will be a public hearing on June 8th. In all, there will be four more public hearings to comment on the proposed guidelines. They will be held on the following dates, times, and locations. Thursday, June 8th, 2017, at the Oberia D. Dempsey Multi-Service Center Auditorium, 127 West 127th Street in Manhattan, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., with interpretation available in Spanish. On Monday, June 12th, uh, at the Bronx Museum of the Arts, Lower Gallery, 1040 Grand Concourse in the Bronx, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, interpretation and simultaneous translation available in Spanish. Wednesday, June 14th, 2017, at the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Customs House, uh, one Bowling Green in Manhattan, from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. with interpretation <coughs> available in Spanish and Mandarin. And Monday, June 19, 2017, at St. Francis College Founders Hall, 180 Remsen Street in Brooklyn, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. with interpretation available in Spanish. <clears throat> Directions to these hearings can be found on our website, nycrgb.org, in the About Us section meeting schedule. You can sign up to speak at these hearings by calling the Rent Guidelines Board offices at 212-669-7480, then press zero to register. There are copies of our meeting schedule here today at the registration table. The final vote will take place on June 27th, starting at 7 p.m. It will be held at Baruch College Mason Hall, 17 Lexington Avenue, corner of 23rd Street in Manhattan. For board members, please note that drafts of both the hotel and apartment explanatory statements will be in your folders at the June 14th public hearing. We request your comments on and or suggested additions to the statements no later than the morning of June 23rd. Revised drafts will be sent to you via email by Wednesday, June 20th, reflecting additions resulting from the public hearings. Any questions, please see Andrew. In your folder, you will find copies of two RGB memos. These documents were distributed to the board members via email prior to this meeting. Uh, before we begin our hearing, I'd like to read some of the rules and parameters for those who are testifying before the board. Each speaker will have two minutes to give his or her testimony. In the event that large numbers of people wish to speak, the chair reserves the right to reduce the allotted speaking time. The clock will beep once when the speaker has 30 seconds left. I will attempt to alternate speakers between tenants and owners, but this may not always be possible. Speakers must confirm their presence with the RGB staff at the registration table located near the entrance of the hall. Speakers will not be called if they have not checked in at the registration table. There is a Spanish interpreter here today. When registering to speak, please notify the staff if you would like an interpreter. I will try to call several names in advance. If your name is called, it is advisable that you move to the front of the auditorium. If you have materials to distribute to the board, you should give them to the RGB staff sitting at the sign-in table near the entrance. And we ask that you please try to stay within your allotted time so we can get through as many speakers as possible. Um, I'm now going to ask our interpreter to uh, read the announcements in Spanish, please.
Eh, entonces, estos son los anuncios de la audiencia pública de hoy, 5 de junio del año 2017. Eh, primero, la Junta Reguladora de Rentas eh, les da la bienvenida a esta audiencia pública para eh, la Junta de Nueva York, de la Ciudad de Nueva York. Esta es la primera de cinco audiencias públicas donde se considerarán comentarios que tienen que ver con ajustes eh, propuestos para la renta y las re renovaciones de alquiler para departamentos, los hoteles y, otro, y otras unidades de vivienda que eh, son sujetas a la ley de estabilización de renta del año 1969 y la Ley de Protección de Emergencia de los Inquilinos del año 74. Estos ajustes eh, afectarán las, los, la, eh, las renovaciones de los contratos de alquiler eh, comenzando el 1 de octubre del 2017 y siguiendo hasta el 30 de septiembre del 2018. Eh, luego eh, la Junta o la directora de la Junta pasó a ver la asistencia y determinó que hay quórum para que proceda la reunión. La próxima reunión de la Junta eh, será una audiencia pública el 8 de junio. Eh, en total habrán cinco audiencias públicas adicionales donde se podrá comentar sobre las propuestas. Eh, se llevarán a cabo las siguientes fechas, en las, a las siguientes horas y las siguientes ubicaciones. Primero, el jueves junio de 8 del año 2017 habrá una audiencia pública para Manhattan. Eh, se hará en el auditorio eh, Dempsey, eh, que está ubicado en la 127 de la calle eh, o, eh, la calle o la calle Oeste, 127 también, y será del 5 a 8 y habrá interpretación disponible del inglés al español. Luego, la siguiente audiencia pública será el lunes 12 de junio 2017 y se ya, ya, llevará a cabo en el Museo de Artes del Bronx, en la Galería Inferior, que está ubicada en la 1040 del Grand Concourse. Esa también será de 5 a 8 de la tarde. Eh, habrá interpretación simultánea también del inglés al español. Luego, el miércoles 14 de junio de 2017, será la próxima audiencia. Esta se llevará a cabo en el, la, el edificio activo de aduanas, Alexander Hamilton, ubicado en la 1 de Bowling Green, en Manhattan. Esta será de 2 a 8 de la noche y ahí también habrá interpretación del inglés al español e interpretación del inglés al mandarino y por último el lunes 19 de junio será la última eh, audiencia pública esta se lle llevará a cabo en el colegio San Francis eh, el auditorio Founders que se ubica en la 180 Ram Ramsen Street en Brooklyn también será de las 5 a 8 y habrá interpretación del inglés al español. Las direcciones a esta audiencia se pueden encontrar en nuestro sitio web nycrgb.org y eh, se encuentran bajo la sección About Us o Sobre Nosotros y de ahí pueden pasar a los horarios de la reunión. Se puede, uno puede inscribirse de antemano llamando eh, a, la a las oficinas de la Junta al 212-669-7480 y luego de llamar o primir el cero para inscribirse. Habrá copias de eh, los horarios de la reunión también en ese sitio web. El voto final eh, se llevará a cabo el 27 de junio empezando a las 7 de la tarde. Eh, se hará en... La, el Colegio Baruch, en eh, la Sala Mason de la 17 de la Avenida Lexington, esquina 23, con la calle 23, en Manhattan. Eh, antes de comenzar esta audiencia, eh, se leyó, la, la directora leyó algunas de las reglas y algunos de los parámetros eh, que se deben respetar cuando den su testimonio ante la Junta. Cada orador tendrá dos minutos para dar su testimonio. Eh, 
si, llegan, si llegara mucha gente eh, que quisiera hablar, la directora de la Junta se reserva el derecho de reducir el tiempo repartido a cada orador o oradora. Eh, el reloj o el cronómetro sonará una vez cuando queden 30 segundos, cuando le quede 30 segundos al, al orador o la oradora. Eh, se intentará de alternar entre testimonios de inquilinos y dueños de edificios, pero no siempre será ¿Aló? No siempre será posible. Los oradores deben confirmar su, su presencia con el personal de la Junta en la mesa de inscripción eh, que se ubica a la entrada de, del auditorio. Los oradores o las oradoras eh, no van a ser llamados a dar su testimonio si no se han inscrito en la mesa de inscripción. Eh, con, so, yo soy el intérprete del inglés al español que estoy disponible hoy cuando se inscriban para dar su testimonio por favor avisen al personal que eh, necesitan un intérprete eh, vamos a llamar a varios nombres de antemano si llamamos su nombre les pido que por favor se restrinjan al tiempo repartido para cada eh, que, que pasen Adelante en el auditorio y se restrinjan al tiempo permitido para cada orador o oradora. Gracias. Thank you. Okay. The first three speakers will be James Jones, Chris Vitali, and Shirley Duville. Mr. Jones? Good evening. Hello, hello. Alphonse Capone. <laughs> Alphonse Capone, crime boss, was guilty of a lot, slash, many murders, etc., etc., etc. But he retained expensive attorneys, legal minds, legal minds, out talk, out outsmart, outmaneuver government prosecutors in the court of law. According to New York media, Alphonse Capone, Alphonse Capone, Al Capone would frequently walk out of court a free man. His attorneys would argue their client was not involved racketeering, racketeering. Government prosecutors finally mailed Alphonse Capone on tax evasion. Alphonse Capone was ordered transported to the federal facility Alcatraz Prison, California. Es Esther Sheckman CEO Mulberry Associates acquired property from Andonis Morthesis, the district, uh, district attorney in uh, Manhattan says, and Andonis Morthesis, Andonis Morthesis is a Greek name. This is what the district attorney in Harlem is telling, that Andonis Morthesis is a Greek, a Greek name, and Donus Morphesis. Uh, Esther Sheckman acquired the property from him. Esther Mr. Sheckman Mr. got Mr. it. Mr. Jones, your time is up. Could you wrap it up, please? Esther Sheckman had an altercation, physical altercation, with the uh, black female tenant leader in, in, on the property. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Chris Vitali. Good evening, Mr. Vitali. Good evening. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak. 
Um, so I showed you guys this last year, but just to reinforce it, these are all the new luxury condos and rentals of Queens. These guys all get the privilege of 421A tax breaks, and some of them are even going to be getting stops on the uh, proposed Brooklyn Queens connector. Again, you're not going to be hearing from any of those guys. These are the stabilized owners that actually have to come down here every year to try to fight to make sure that our, the public assistance benefit that we're providing without reimbursement is at least held to a decent minimum. Let me continue. So just bear with me with this list. Big Apple Compactor and Sprinkler Company, Woodside. 45 technicians and administrators. Corona Appliance Corona, six servicemen, appliance repair. Corona Plumbing and Heating in Corona. Appliance Cabinet Plumbing Fixture Supplies, seven employees. Gold Star Electrical in Maspeth. Electrical service and repairs, 22 to 30 technicians, six to nine administrative employees. The law offices of Alexander Paps in Forest Hills. I usually have to use them for the typical five tenants that need to pay after three months. They have two employees. Long Island Janitor in Jackson Heights. They provide hardware and janitorial supplies. They have four. Pesegio's Plumbing and Heating in Woodside. Licensed plumbers, 15 employees. Segundo's Construction Corp in Brooklyn. Contractors for apartment maintenance and renovation employees. They got six employees. Skillman Hardware in Sunnyside. Hardware and materials and supplies, seven employees. Standard Pest Management in Astoria. Extermination Services, 18 technicians, seven administrative. Star Industrial <laughs> in Brooklyn. These guys just finished my $300,000 boiler replacement so that I can be burning cleaner natural gas. And they will also continue to provide maintenance and service. They've got 20 employees. Total Elevator in Sunnyside. Elevator maintenance and repair, 16 employees. They only represent, they present the majority of the people that I go to, but certainly not everybody. In case you weren't counting. Mr. Kelly, your time is up. If you could just wrap it up, That was please. 12 companies with about 181 to 192 employees. We're providing an actual sustainable amount of, of jobs here in the city as a stabilized department owners, especially with our aging buildings that constantly need maintenance in order to keep them quality. I just would like to not be, you know, to just understand that that's where our rent money is going to. And, uh, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vitale. I have a question. There's a question for you, Mr. Vitale, if you don't mind. Hi, thanks for your, for your testimony. It, it's quite clear the economic generating of jobs through owners, but can you just, since you focused on that, just tell us a little bit about the buildings you own in Queens? Sure, it's, uh, yeah, it's, actually, it's actually, on, actually on here. That's this one. My grandpa put that up in 1954. So you can kind of imagine that it constantly needs some, some care and maintenance. You know, I. Uh, it's been in the family. It's now my responsibility, and I just hope to always keep it, you know, a decent, decent quality housing. Any further questions for Mr. Vitale? Yeah, can I just, I appreciate you telling us about your grandfather's building. Can you give us some more details about the building, like how many it's units? Got 50, it's got 56 units. 56 units, and, right. and they're all unstabilized? Only two are unstabilized. And they are controlled or deregulated? They're deregulated. There are three deregulated apartment, the rest are under stabilization. Correct. And so three deregulated, the rest are stabilized, no rent controlled units? No, no rent controlled. And it's this, part, this building has been in your family since the 50s, you said? Since 19, my grandpa built, built it in 1954. Great. Right. And are you doing any uh, major capital improvements in the building? Yeah, well, that's what I was just saying. I did the, the boiler replacement. And I, I'm not going to lie to you. I could have waited. I could have waited at least maybe another 10 years to do it until eventual servicing becomes too out of hand that you actually have to, you're forced to replace it. But we went ahead and did it. I'm glad I did. I know that, the, you know, not for nothing, our dear leader just pulled us out of the, the Paris Accords. The cities have to actually do something about it now. And I know that, that, that both the mayor and the governor are encouraging us local municipalities to actually go ahead and do the things that obviously our national government doesn't care about. You know, and I'm trying to actually do my part. And did you apply for an MCI for Yes, that? I did. In fact, I was upset when I saw that 
um, and I know it was voted down, but it, but it upsets me to know that, that one of the proposed rent guidelines was actually um, suggesting that if you had an MCI, that upon lease renewal, there might be a actual rent rollback. I just don't understand why you would want to penalize owners for actually trying to, to do improvements into their buildings, especially yeah. these aging buildings. Was the MCI approved by HCR? Yes, it was. Great. And so, and you'll be able to get collect that increase as well? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions for Mr. Vitale? No, thank you, Mr. Vitale. You're welcome. The next speaker is Shirley Duville. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Mr. Ville, and I'm Can you speak closer to the microphone, please? Yes. My name is Mr. Ville, and I'm here with the Queens Community House. I've been a res residing in my rent-stabilized studio apartment in Jamaica for about nine years now. I am on a fixed income and have been having difficulties in paying my rent. I'm on FEPS program that pays a portion of my rent under a strict subsidy maximum, which is 750 a month for a family of two. Now my legal stated rent is way over the maximum allowable rent and I'm responsible to pay the monthly excess rent above the supplement. The rent takes up about almost 90% of my income, not including electricity, cell phones, transportation, internet, which is necessary for my son's schoolwork. Also, food. For example, when I came home from picking my son up from school, we discovered that our electricity was turned off due to non-payment. And yes, even with a payment plan, I still wasn't able to make those payments because everything went towards rent. As a parent and mother trying to explain this to my child, that he had to do his homework, eat, shower with a flashlight. It was one of the worst experience for me, having to put my son through that. It's part of my job, sorry, to provide a safe home environment. And I couldn't even do that. Even a small percent rate increase will make apartments with similar rents too expensive for struggling families as myself. I'm already having difficulties paying my share of the rent and a rent increase which would push me further towards the verge of eviction and homelessness. If I were to be evicted, I would not be able to find an apartment that meets the criteria for the subsidy program. Not only would I lose the apartment, but would be forced to enter the shelter with my son. This is just one example, but thinking of on a larger scale, this would significantly reduce the tiny pool of available affording housing for many New York City families, like myself, that are struggling to pay their rents. Thank you, and good night. We need okay, there might be some back. questions for you. Just can you hold on one second? Any questions for Mr. Vian? What would a 2% increase in rent mean to you? Well, at this point, I would not be able to stay at the apartment. Can you the ask? Uh, sorry, go ahead. At the moment, the maximum, I would be over the maximum that they require for a two family member in the apartment. So we would have to relocate because it would be too much to pay. And I'm struggling as it is. Can you tell us what your current rent is? Right now it's 996 for a studio apartment. And they just gave me a lease and it would be a 1,000, I believe 1,016 uh, to pay for the studio apartment for a two year lease. I struggle because I go back and forth and I don't know whether I should do a one year and stay in that bracket or should I do a two year to keep me, so it's a hard decision to make because I don't know where that extra money is coming from. So, but I have to somehow find a way to pay for it. But and you get a subsidy of some sort? Do I hear you correctly? Uh, no. For well, 
Yes, for the families, yes. Is that toward your rent? Yes. And that's how much? That was it again. Seven fifty. Okay, and, and do you have this known as a preferential rent? I think you... Yes, I that see. is it. <laughs> and do you know what the maximum legal rent is for your apartment? It's uh, what, 1400 mm. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they... When will it not increase? How high can it keep going? I don't understand. I'm trying, and I want to do my share, my part, but I don't want to become a burden and have to live in a shelter with my son and struggle and, you know, where do we put our stuff? Do we have to, you know, leave it or, you know, it's not a good environment. I'm, I just don't want to become a burden on the city. But I'm trying to pay the rent, but it's just impossible. Everything is going towards rent and we're not even talking about mass, mass transit. That also goes up. Food goes up. But your income doesn't go up, so I don't see how. That's why we need that rollback. It's so important. Okay, well, do you understand that even if we did a rollback, that it wouldn't apply to your situation because you have a preferential rent? Well, it would help. I'm speaking for others, other family members also. Okay. It's not just me. I want to help others. There's others that would definitely be able to need that assistance and it would definitely help. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for... Um, Can I just... Uh, you said if you, you couldn't afford the rent if it went up like 2%, 1%, 3%. Mm -hmm. Where would you go? What would be your uh, family options? I don't want to leave New York. Right. We've been here. I was born and raised and I want to stay here in New York. I don't want to leave. And even if we were to leave, I believe that will even incur more of an expense because transportation is totally different once you leave New York. You must have a car. Uh, mass transit is not available. So if I'm struggling here, that will be three times worse. So I want to stay here. I want my son to be here and raised. And the opportunities are here. So that's why it's important. But it's just a, such a struggle. You can't imagine. It's just a struggle. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Have Thank you for your testimony. All right, the next three speakers are going to be Jorge Rodriguez, Nelson Lopez, and Clever Borgia. Um, so let's start with Jorge Rodriguez. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jorge Rodriguez, and I'm here to request that the RGB keep the rent increase at the amounts they are now, zero for one year, two for two years. Anything lower than that would be more than appropriate and welcome. Uh, Ms. Garcia, the tenant member at the April meeting, had suggested negative amounts with certain stipulations. Um, that would even be better. Um, I live at 9823 Harvest Harding, better known as Lefrak City. I have lived there for 36 years. Why do I want a rent reduction? Here is a breakdown of what I've been paying to survive this year. My rent is more than 30% of my federal annuity. My two-year lease increased last year by 2204. My annuity was increased by $9 based on a cost of living adjustment known as COLA, which we don't know if it'll continue with this new administration. Now, the annuity was increased by 0.3%. Okay? <coughs> Let me repeat that, 0.3%. I think it's the lowest that, well, other than zero, it's the lowest I've ever seen. The federal taxes that I pay on that annuity was increased by 50 cents. Okay? Um, the net annuity that I receive every month was reduced by $5.16. My Medicare was increased by 12. My supplemental health insurance by 12.58. My dental plan by 108. We have two major capital improvements going on in effect right now. Two are pending. One of those that are now in effect was appealed because it wasn't enough for the landlord. 
Now he's now in the Supreme Court trying to get a dollar and 99 cents back that the DHCR reduced the MCI by. Okay, as you all know, the RGB was in the Supreme Court not too long ago because of the RSA uh, um, rent. So your time is up, so could you wrap it up, please? Okay, what I have screwed, by the way. What, I'm, what I feel is that the operational costs and costs incurred by landlords should not be passed along to us, okay? I have screwed, that's it. However, the landlords have to recoup their losses and investment, MCI, vacancy bonuses, individual improvement increases, benefit from the 421A rules, various ways to deduct investments and losses on their 1040, preferential rent, and they can charge for air conditioners, refrigerators, microwaves, whatever they put into the apartment. Okay, they also charge for um, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, late fees, etc. The interest on our security de de deposit has been zero because they claim between what um, the banks withhold and all the processing fees for the landlord, we don't see anything. They I, get that I'm money. sorry I have to interrupt you because your time is up. Thank you for your Can testimony. Can I just say one more thing? Very quickly. Okay, so um, lastly, the one to three percent for one year lease and the two to four percent for two year lease that been discussed in April to me is unacceptable. Thank you for listening and good night. We must definitely have a rent rollback. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lopez, Nelson Lopez. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Could you please have a translator? I'm sorry? Oh, okay, that's fine. Hold on one second. If you like, you can pull the mic off the stand so you can pass it back, pass it back and forth. I think we can just move. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. It doesn't pull off? All right. Uh, Mi nombre es Nelson López y yo estoy aquí con el Catholic Migration Services por la reducción de renta. My name is Nelson López and I'm here with Catholic Migration Services asking for a rent reduction, a rollback. Estoy viviendo en el 9036 calle de Jamaica, Queens, por 37 años. I've lived in 9036 149th Street in Jamaica, Queens for 37 years. El casero es Sarah Relty Holding Corp. La razón de la reducción de renta es porque mi renta está muy alta. So my landlord is Sarah Realty Holding Corp. The reason I'm asking for a rent rollback is because currently my rent is too high. Y mi sueldo es bajo. Para poder cubrir todos mis gastos. And my wages are too low to be able to cover all my um, expenses. Cada vez de que llega el día de pago de renta es para mí una frustración. Y no solo eso, también tengo que pagar seguro médico y medicamentos para mi esposa, la cual no trabaja. Um, Every time that uh, rent uh, day or the day to pay rent comes up, for me, I feel a gr uh, great frustration. And it's not only this. Besides this, I have to pay for medical insurance and for um, medicine for my wife, um, who does not work. Por sus, por sus enfermedades. Soy yo el único que trae ingresos a mi lugar de vivienda. Por lo tanto, el 55 al 60 por ciento de mi salario se va en renta. So I have to pay for uh, medication for my wife who's sick. I forgot to complete that. Um, I'm the only one who has income at home or brings income home. For this reason, about 55 to 60 percent of my salary goes toward rent. Y además, tengo que pagar un retroactivo de MCI 
que son 62 dólares por cuarto, que equivale a 124 dólares por dos cuartos en mi apartamento. And besides this, I have to pay uh, retroactively MCI costs, which amount to $62 per room, um, amounting to, in turn, $124 for both rooms of my apartment. Créame, señores y señoras, que esto es preocupante para mi futuro retiro, cual está muy cerca. Estoy hablando de cinco años que me quedan. Muchas gracias por escucharme. So believe me, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a grave concern for me, especially for uh, my plans for future retirement, which should be five years down the line. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Borgia? Yeah, I think we need the interpreter for Mr. Rowe. Good evening. Good evening. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Clever Borja y estoy con Catholic Migration Service esta tarde por la reducción de renta. Good evening. My name is Clever Borja. I'm also with Catholic Migration Services and I'm here to demand a rent rollback. Yo soy un trabajador de la construcción. Como parte de las minorías de la ciudad de Nueva York, nuestros salarios son los menos pagados y somos los que menos ingresos tenemos en la ciudad de Nueva York. I'm a construction worker and as part of, a, of the minority populations of New York City, we receive the lowest wages and therefore we take home the lowest income. Yo Pago alrededor del 45% de mis ingresos desde hace 10 años que vivo en Jackson High Queens. Jackson, yeah. So for the 10 years that I've lived in Jackson Heights, Queens, I pay 45% of my income toward rent. En la mayoría del tiempo, en los últimos 5 años, yo soy el que traigo ingresos a la casa porque mi esposa es sobreviviente de cáncer desde hace cinco años y trabaja temporalmente. So for the last five years, I've been the main breadwinner at home and this is because my wife is a cancer survivor and she can only work temporarily. Definitivamente, nosotros necesitamos un respiro, necesitamos una pausa en los gastos que conlleva porque ya no tenemos otras cuentas de ingreso yo he trabajado tanto en todos los lados y no he podido mejorar mis ingresos en, en esta ciudad definitivamente creo que eh, si no existe una reducción de renta o al menos una pausa un respiro para nosotros tenemos que buscar no sé otros sitios con en peores condiciones como lo que existen, muy lejos del transporte, y no quiero pensar qué es lo que podríamos hacer en el futuro. So, we need some relief or a pause in rent increases um, and, be, and, and in our overall expenses. Because right now, I have no other source of income. I've worked very hard for many years in other jobs um, but I have not been able to make more income. If we don't get a pause in rent increases or some type of relief, I'm not sure. I imagine the worst will happen. I'll have to look for housing in, in, in worse conditions that are far away from decent transportation. De verdad, yo les pido a ustedes que consideren a las familias de trabajadores como yo que definitivamente hacen todo el esfuerzo por pagar su renta, pero a su vez también no son compensados con servicios eh, 
es pésimo el servicio en los edificios donde vivimos, no les importa. Mi apartamento han pasado ocho años y jamás lo han, lo han reparado, no lo han repintado, por lo menos a pesar de que tenemos un contrato por escrito. And really, I then ask you to take into consideration um, the reality of working families. And we make all efforts necessary to pay the rent. And even then, we receive terrible, ser terrible services. In my case, for eight years now, I have not had any repairs done, no painting jobs, nothing, despite the fact that we have a contract, a, a, a rental contract. Gracias a ustedes por escuchar. Thank you. Solo una pregunta, ¿cuántas personas vive en su vivienda? So, just a quick question, how many people live in your household? Vivimos en un apartamento de un, de un dormitorio, mi esposa y yo. Yeah. Gracias. So, my wife and I live in a one bedroom apartment. Gracias. Uh, ¿Le han aumentado la renta por otras razones que no sean uh, las decisiones de esta Junta? ¿Han aumentado sus rentas por otras razones que no sean las decisiones de esta Junta que el RGB uh, votó? No, lo que es de ley, eh, cada, tengo un contrato por cada año y me, me suben lo que corresponde a la ley. ¿Usted sabe si paga la renta legal en su apartamento? ¿Do you pay the legal rent in your apartment? No, no, no conozco si es que está, es legal o, o, o no. Can you give a translation of the answer, please? Thank you. Yeah, the answer was, um, uh, the, I guess, additional costs are just what are allowed legally in one-year leases, and he's not sure whether or not he pays legal rent. Any further questions? <coughs> no. Thank you very much, sir. Can I just how long have you how long have you lived in that apartment? Quantos años tú vivías en este apartamento? Yo vivo diez años y mi esposa vive como unos cinco más. He's he's been there ten years and his wife's been there for an additional five. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next two speakers are Leandro Raquera and Juan Martinez. Leandro Raquia? Raquia, is that correct? Requena. Thank you. Requena. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving us, give us the time. Okay, um, I would like to say something, how important is for everybody to have a home. Without home, we don't have nothing. We can live in the, like a homeless or something like that. I'm a mother of two kids, Actually three, but two are living with me. Both of them, they are graduated from the college, but they have a big debt for each one. I live in this building more than 37 years. Thanks for the rent stabilization, I, I still have a place to live with my kids. And my kids have some place to still, because they finish, they graduate in the school, but they still, uh, trying to looking for a job. My son graduated at Columbia University, like international affair, good honoring. He was a good student, but it's too, ha too hard to find a student. You know how much he uh, his, his debt? Two hundred thousand dollar. My my daughter is the same situation, and uh, I am in disability right now. I receive one seventy three weekly. How you can survive with that to pay your rent if we don't fight for this rent, ro rent rollback? How come? This is our rights. We are citizens who pay our taxes year by year. In this, we came here to have a better future for our kids. I was working like a cleaner, like a babysitter, like everybody. But I want the best future for my kids. But meantime, they don't have that the job that they deserve it because they study day and night to get, be a good citizen and to serve the country, we need a home. That's for me, it's very important. The realtors, they put it MCI, all those traps. 
I would like to invite you to come to 8836 and watch who is the, the government or who is we are tired to, to say, I have a hole in the bathroom. The, the bill didn't work. Everybody ring the bill is in my apartment. Excuse me, your okay. time is up. Could you wrap it up, please? Yeah. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Any questions for um, this uh, witness? What are you proposing that we pass as the guidelines this year? What is your recommendation? My recommendation is Kenya. thinking in the working families, fathers and mothers who are working hard to have a better future for our kids. But we need a decent, a affordable rent. And we want rent rolled back for everybody. That's we are here. Rent roll back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Juan Martinez needs an interpreter, please. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Juan Martínez. Yo vivo en el 9036 y de la 149 en Jamaica. Eh, yo vengo por la, el nombre de la oficina de Católica Migration Services. Vivo, eh, el ando es el eh, Sara Realty Corporation. Aquí vivo por 44 años, o sea que desde 1973 no estoy de acuerdo con que suban la renta actualmente, porque desde 2000, este, este, que Sara compró este edificio, me han subido más del 65%. Just, excuse me, let me interrupt you so we can get the interpretation, please. Sí. He's got one more. All right. Lo que significa que estoy pagando más del 30% de lo que debería pagar. Gracias. So, good evening. My name is Juan Gonza uh, Martinez. Excuse me, Martinez. Um, I live in 9036 of 149th Street in Jamaica. I'm here also with the Catholic Immigration Office. Um, I, the, my rent stabilized building uh, is owned by Sarah Realty. I have lived there for 44 years, in other words, since 1973. I'm against any rent in increases because since the year 2000, when Sarah bought my building, my rent has gone up close to 65%. What this means is that I'm paying more than 30% of um, what I should pay in rent. Any questions for Mr. Martinez? Una pregunta, usted, ¿cuánto paga de su porcentaje de ingreso en renta entonces? So how much do you actually pay of your income in rent? La, uh, la renta actual? Sí, ¿cuál por ciento? Oh, el, el 50%. 50%. Gracias. Any other questions for Mr. Martinez? No, thank you, Mr. Martinez. Oh, Kathy. Oh, I'm sorry, we do have one question. Sorry. Uh, are, you, are you in scree? Are you part, is, is he getting screen? The question is, are you receiving screen? Oh, see. Yes. So you have had no increases. So if you're receiving screen, the question is, have you had any increases? You personally. If you receive screen, you don't receive 
usted personalmente ha, ha eh, sufrido aumento de renta? Oh, sí, claro. En ese ha habido como tres o cuatro NCI. Sí, um, yes, because in that building there have been three or four MCIs. Any follow up on that? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to take about a 10 minute break and see if there are any additional speakers. Thank you. Y vamos a pasar por unos 10 minutos para ver si hay más eh, oradores inscritos. Gracias. If, if anyone else wishes to speak, you should go register out in the hallway. Y si hay alguien más que quisiera eh, dar su testimonio, por favor, inscríbanse a la entrada eh, en la mesa de inscripción. Can we also announce that if anybody wants to get emails about these hearings, they should sign up at the front desk so they can get automatic emails to let them know from the guidelines for when there's hearings coming up, and they can do that at the desk out front. Y también eh, para los que quieran recibir correos electrónicos anunciando cuándo son las próximas eh, eh, juntas o audiencias de, de, de la junta, también pueden pedirlo a la entrada. Thank you. We'll use them in about 10 minutes.